In the year 1885, in a land called the Congo, a king named Leopold II ruled with an iron fist. But this king wasn't like the ones in fairy tales with kind hearts and noble deeds. Oh, no. He was a monster who unleashed stomach-churning horrors upon the Congolese people. His reign was a nightmare that scarred a whole generation. Get ready to hear a shocking tale of greed, brutality, and the courage of those who survive. Welcome to Antiquio. Who the hell is King Leopold II? King Leopold was the second king of the Belgians from 1865 to 1909 and the founder and sole owner of the Congo Free State. Born in Brussels as the second but eldest surviving son of Leopold I and Louise of Orleans, Leopold succeeded his father to the Belgian throne in 1865 and reigned for 44 years. He was the real-life embodiment of a supervillain. With a moustache that could rival any evil mastermind, he cunningly exploited Africa, claiming the Congo as his personal playground and became synonymous with colonial brutality and exploitation. So what are the despicable things did this man do? Well, the amputation of hands and feet. In the heart of the African continent, a tale of horror unfolded. King Leopold II, a ruler with a heart of darkness, demanded one thing from the Congolese people. Rubber, but he had a twisted way of getting what he wanted. When the Congolese failed to meet their rubber quotas, fear gripped their hearts. The king's enforcers would descend upon the villages seeking retribution. They didn't just punish the people, they wanted to terrify them into submission. They would amputate their hands and feet, leaving behind a gruesome reminder of their failure. Imagine the cries of anguish echoing through the jungle as mothers, fathers and children faced this cruel fate. The very thought sends shivers down your spine, doesn't it? King Leopold II used this unspeakable violence to control the population, to make them work harder and to ensure his own wealth and power. Forced labor and brutal conditions. In the heart of the Congo, where lush jungles whispered secrets, darkness descended upon the land. Under the scorching sun, men, women, and children toiled in rubber plantations. Their bodies ached, their spirits crushed, as they were pushed to their limit. But it wasn't just hard work they faced, but a never-ending nightmare. Whips cracked in the air, lashing across their backs, leaving scars that told tales of pain and suffering. Tears mingled with the sweat on their faces as they feared for their lives. Failure was not an option. Those who couldn't meet the rubber quotas faced a fate worse than death. But it wasn't only the physical torment that haunted them. The darkness seeped into their souls, stealing their hope and crushing their dreams. Their cries echoed through the dense forests, unheard by the world. In this harrowing landscape, innocence was lost, replaced by the cries of anguish and despair. The bonds of family were shattered as loved ones were torn apart. Children's laughter was silenced, replaced by the haunting silence of broken spirit. Yet, even amidst the darkness, a flicker of resilience burned in their hearts. A determination to survive, to protect one another, and to never forget the injustice they endured. The destruction of villages. King Leopold II, a ruler driven by greed and power, unleashed a reign of terror upon the innocent. With fury in his eyes, he accused villages of harboring rebels, a charge that sealed their fate. Flames engulfed their homes reducing dreams to ashes. The crackling of fire drowned the villagers' cries as despair settled in their hearts. Children clung to their mothers, trembling in fear, while elders wept for their lost heritage. The very fabric of their culture was being torn apart, leaving scars that would forever mar their land. Amidst the chaos, families scattered like leaves in the wind, searching for safety. The once vibrant communities were reduced to haunting remnants of their former selves. The price paid for defiance was steep paid in blood, sweat and tears, spreading disease and death. As the sun beat down mercilessly on the weary workers of the Congo, a sinister shadow loomed over their lives. Disease. With each drop of sweat that fell from their exhausted bodies, the threat of malaria, sleeping sickness and dysentery crept closer. 
forced to toil endlessly in the rubber plantations, their weakened immune systems fell prey to these silent killers. Malaria, the stealthy assailant, invaded their bodies through the relentless mosquito bites, leaving them shivering and weak. Sleeping sickness, the treacherous enemy, lurked in the shadows transmitted by the Setsi fly, stealing away their energy and sanity. Dysentery, the cruel tormentor, spread like wildfire through contaminated water, causing excruciating pain and claiming countless lives. In the Congo Free State, disease was a relentless companion, claiming the lives of millions. Their bodies, already weakened by grueling labor, succumbed to these invisible foes. Families mourned their loved ones. Communities were left devastated and the land echoed with sorrow. King Leopold's lack of accountability. Now, let me tell you something that will leave you shaking your head in disbelief. King Leopold II, the man responsible for all these stomach, churning atrocities, had the audacity to avoid taking any responsibility for his horrific action. Can you believe it? When confronted with the death toll of 10 million Africans, he turned a blind eye and shrugged off any guilt. Instead of admitting his wrongdoings, he shamelessly tried to justify his actions by claiming he was bringing civilization to the Congolese people. Can you imagine the nerve? It's as if he thought he could simply sweep away the cries of the suffering souls with a wave of his royal hand. He had the power to stop the bloodshed, to end the pain and agony. But no, he chose to turn a blind eye and bask in his own wealth and glory. We must never forget the lessons taught by this despicable ruler. We must stand up for justice, for the rights of the vulnerable. Let this story be a reminder that no one, not even a king, should be allowed to escape accountability for their actions. And that's it from this video. I hate to say this, but please hit that like button. And also subscribe as a small support to our channel. You're appreciated 